Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationship Advice and it's by user CyberDriverXXX. My girlfriend, female 28, is pissed. I, male 34, wouldn't show her my ex's nudes before deleting them and is now questioning our relationship. I'm thinking about just letting it end, should I? Well, to cut straight to the point, my current girlfriend is pissed at me because I deleted old nudes from an ex-girlfriend from 14 years ago without letting her see them. While cleaning out my closet, I recently found my old iPod Touch, this thing from 2010, and I absolutely loved it. Stumbling upon it after all these years is like finding a time capsule, so we excitedly hooked it up to see what 2010 to 2013 me was up to. While having a good time laughing at the tall tees, mall bot and extremely fake ass bling, oh god help me barf, and fitted caps I wore back then, while going through the pictures together, we stumbled across some butt naked pictures from an old relationship I forgot were on there. Trying not to make a big deal of it, I said oh crap and turned the iPad away from her and deleted the pictures, which I thought she would understand. Boy was I wrong. First, she playfully asked to see them. I told her no. She knows that's effed up and things quickly went very south from there. She started accusing me of hiding things, saying she just wants to see what she looks like and that it's no big deal and eventually started crying. I told her the pictures are from 14 effing years ago and if I showed my ex's nudes to her, what's to stop her from thinking I wouldn't show her nudes to someone else if they bitched and boned enough? Now she accuses me of calling her a bitch. No, 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 no. I didn't call her a bitch. I said she was bitching at me. Belittling her and already thinking of the next woman. Things are seriously snowballing and I've never seen this weirdly jealous and nosy side of her before. We've been together for about six months, but been on again, off again friends with benefits for about two years. She knows I do not have patience for silly childish crap like this, so I kicked her out of my apartment. She calls me an a-hole and says she's going to have to think about our relationship. I told her if she wants to break up over some nonsense like this, then we shouldn't have gotten together in the first place. I know I was right for not showing her the pictures and the tears were a manipulation tactic, but I'm absolutely stumped as to why she would try so hard to see them and figured maybe this sub could provide some insight into the utter madness. Uh, OP, I can't help you much into trying to understand why she would behave this way. The only thing I can say is it is a huge red flag. You were absolutely right to delete those pictures. You didn't even know you had them for 14 years. Showing them to your girlfriend would have been a huge breach of privacy to your ex, which you apparently haven't seen in a really long time. As I said in the beginning of my commentary, her complete behavior regarding this issue is a huge red flag. Everything from the tears to the gaslighting to then telling you she'll need to rethink the relationship. Yeah, that's a whole lot of manipulation for any relationship, let alone one that's just six months in. In your title, you say you're thinking about just letting it end. I think you should. And what do you guys think about OP's situation? Let me know in the comment section and now let's check out the community comments. Auntie Venom says, nah, she's totally wrong. New girlfriend doesn't get to see old girlfriend's nudes. That's a violation of your old girlfriend's privacy. And only because your new girlfriend wants to compare herself. So it's only been six short months and she's showing you her hand. Deleted says, what the F? That's not normal. You did the right thing. Sounds to me your girlfriend has a serious green eyed monster and most likely wanted to compare the girl to her if that's the type of person she is. But those photos were sent to you with trust. You didn't belittle her. You put boundaries in and that says more about you than her. In my opinion, you did the right thing. And OP responds, thanks, I appreciate you saying that. I think I'm going to go ahead and just let this one go. In the two years I've known her, I've never seen anything that would indicate she was this, I don't know, insecure? As mentioned, our relationship was casual then, so maybe a switch gets flipped when she has a committed partner. Either way, it's not going to be my problem. Emergency T6847 says, you did the right thing by getting rid of them. 
It shows the maturity in you. She wanting to see them shows the immaturity in her. She should have been grateful and realized she has a man with integrity. Instead, she got pissed. Imagine if you had pictures of her and she found out you shared them with your future, hopefully, girlfriend. She'd be blowing up your phone or worse. I respect you and you did the right thing. And Opie responds, As soon as I read, it shows the maturity in you, my eyes slid sideways to the shelf full of action figures off to the side in my living room. Lol. As for having pictures of her, that's exactly the argument I tried to make when she was having her meltdown. I'm like, hey, if I show you her pictures, you're always going to be wondering if I'm showing yours to somebody else. No matter what you say, it's going to be in the back of your mind because if a person betrays someone to you, then odds are they'll betray you as well. It did no good. Additional information from OP's comments. To clarify ages, my ex was 22 at the time I was 20. There were absolutely no minors involved. My current girlfriend, who I'm 6 years older than, was about 14 at the time, but we didn't know each other and hopefully it goes without saying that I would not have been speaking to her, much less trying to date her at that time. I may have explained things in a confusing way and I really don't want that stank on me, lol. Also, some backstory on us. I've known her for two and a half years. We met in school and we've never had any problems whatsoever. She's one of the few people I've ever instantly clicked with. We started hanging out and shortly after meeting things got physical. She explained that she was only interested in a casual thing and I agreed. It worked out well. I backed off when she started seeing somebody and she did the same when I got involved with someone with no hard feelings. Everything was great. About six months ago, we decided to give a relationship a chance. We've literally never fought and had a great time around each other, so why not, you know? What I described in this post is the first I've ever seen of this behavior from her. So I don't know if it's a mental health thing or just an aspect of her personality that emerges when she has a committed partner. If the relationship ends, that might not even be my choice anymore. So that's where the uncertainty lies for me. I mean, we were having a good time, mostly laughing at me dressing like a clown in shiny costume jewelry, as was the style at the time. Looking at ancient and legendary memes, hide your wife, hide your kids, Rick Rolling, Afro Ninja, and Cyber Police. Conversations with friends long gone or grown up with families now. I was really enjoying the nostalgia and then it all went sideways for no reason. This is our first fight, and I'm thinking it's just going to get weirder and crazier from here. We're not even starting at 10, we're starting at like 100 over some nonsense. She's mad because I won't show her and deleted naked pictures of another person that I shouldn't even had had anymore. And then she tried to coerce me into bending the knee and giving her what she wants. This is like me asking to see pictures of her ex's penis, it's odd for me to care. Very weird for me to ask and crappy for her to show me. I have no clue why we couldn't just go back at laughing at me dressed like a dollar store rapper. Okay, so the community agrees that OP did the right thing by deleting the pictures and that the girlfriend's behavior is a red flag, that she shouldn't be asking him about showing somebody else's pictures to her. And apparently this is enough for OP to say the relationship is done. So now let's move on to the update to see how this story ends. In my first post, quite a few women thanked me for not showing the nudes and deleting them immediately. I'm starting to think I've been pretty naive in this area. I've always known there were a-holes that showed private pictures to others, because people suck. But I guess I never realized just how many out there were like that. I'm not trying to sound like an angel or anything, but showing off people's nude photos is an undignified, treacherous, rat bastard thing to do. So I never did it and consequently never thought about other people doing it. Now the update. After not talking for a couple of days, she finally texted me asking why I haven't called or texted her and I told her the truth. I've been mad at her and trying to decide if I wanted to continue the relationship. How the fact that we were having a good time one minute and then the next was pure madness reminded me of all the crap I went through with my mother as a teen and how I don't want to deal with that kind of behavior ever again. 
I had a very emotionally abusive mom that would constantly cause fights over literally nothing. Think DVDs, staple guns, tape measures, etc. Then kick me out of the house in order to show me whose goddamn house this is. So I have an extremely low tolerance for people starting up and coming at me over petty nonsense. To top it all off, my mom has since passed away, so that's another layer of things. But I've never tried to make my issues anyone else's problem. I've told her about my mother before, so she knew all about this. She told me she didn't mean to make me feel that way, but my flat out refusal to show her the pictures, combined with me turning away from her when I was deleting the nudes, made her feel like I was hiding things and rejecting her. I immediately called BS because I told her we were going to keep looking through the iPod. I was just deleting my ex's nudes and she damn well knows it. In the two plus years we've known each other, I've never given her any reason whatsoever to doubt me or think I'm a liar. I eventually get tired of texting, so I try to call her and she rejects the call, telling me she's not ready to speak yet. I tell her I'm done texting, so call me when she's ready to talk and I quit replying. She starts sending me angrier and angrier messages when I wouldn't reply back. F you! This is controlling! What the F is wrong with texting? Go F your redheaded bitch! My ex in the pictures was a redhead and has been out of my life for over a decade. She then sends a picture of an action figure that's been broken apart and I immediately knew who it was. Prison Mike. It was effing Prison Mike. He was innocent in all of this. You see, much like myself and a lot of you, she loves The Office. So for her birthday this year, I hunted down a 3D printed Prison Mike 112 scale head. Along with the head and a little mug, I combined it with a Two-Face figure's body and spent a week painting them both. I then printed out a backdrop of the conference room as well as pictures of the main cast, except Andy, I hate him, and made a diorama with standees of them in it for the prison mic figure. All combined, the thing took about two weeks to make, but it was fun. And when I gave it to her, she went nuts. She was hugging me, kissing me, calling me sweet and said it's one of the most thoughtful things someone's ever given her. And now she's apparently taken a hammer to it. I'm not saying it belonged in the Louvre or anything, but I'd be lying through my teeth if I said I wasn't damn proud of how it turned out and didn't think it looked awesome. She knows how I feel about destroying people's art, whether it's a doodle or an oil painted masterpiece. Destroying someone's creation is an awful thing to do. She knew exactly what she was doing when she destroyed that gift and there's no way in hell I'm going to keep seeing someone that vindictive. I'm done. What she did was definitely a trap at worst and a test at best and they're both massive and unacceptable red flags and I refuse to be in one of those types of relationships where you come home after a fight and your clothes are cut up or your car windows are busted or any other trashy stuff. I don't know what the hell her problem is and like Phil Collins, I don't care anymore. Property destruction, whether hers or mine, for any reason, especially revenge, is automatically game over for me. I'm shocked, annoyed and confused, but still, thank you all for your interest and responses and please, pour one out for Prison Mike, he was truly the bell of the ball. Well, OP, at least you're not in that kind of a relationship anymore, so good for you for having strong boundaries and respecting them for yourself and getting out of that. And today, once my day is over, I'll follow Ron Swanson's recommendation and pour myself a lag of Ulan in honor of Prison Mike. And on that note, here's wishing you the best in the future, OP. Thank you so much for sharing and take care. And now, let's finish this video with a mood booster post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user DT20. You want me to work zero overtime? Sure thing, boss. Some context. I work as a manager in a call center. I am nowhere near the phones and generally do not interact with customers. Rather, I am a knowledge repository for my staff and handle communication between our team and the client company which we provide support for. We are a technical support team, not a sales or order support, and the devices which we support are very complex consumer electronics. Most of our support time goes to professional installers and we rarely speak to customers firsthand. 
In short, my job is to know our policies like the back of my hand and to know the products we support better than anyone, except the designers that engineered them. A secondary part of my job is to coordinate our online chat team, which is generally pretty hands-off other than right as the shift ends when I generally jump in to monitor any active chats and make sure they close up quickly. I don't want to keep my guys here any longer than necessary. They like it better and it cuts down on overtime hours for the entire line of business by a lot. This means I generally rack up 15 to 20 minutes of overtime a day, though some days it can be as little as zero and others as much as an hour. My direct boss knows all about this and is generally all for it. One day, however, the guy who was in charge of all the support teams sent out a memo that management should never be getting overtime. I brought this up with my boss and this would seriously impact my team, who arranged a meeting with the big boss. Big Boss proceeds to tell my boss that no, I cannot rack up any overtime hours. Fine, I get out at a reasonable time every day, I have zero issues with this. So the next Monday, I log out right when my shift ends. Turns out, three of my guys were there for an extra hour with last minute chats. Tuesday, nearly the same story. This continues all through the week. We are bleeding overtime hours for support staff, with most of my team getting nearly an hour of overtime per day. This goes on for a pay period when Big Boss comes back and tells us we were told to reduce overtime hours and that we had somehow racked up even more than we had before. My boss backed me up and told the Big Boss that no, we were told to reduce management overtime hours and that I had indeed not racked up any overtime. Big Boss asks why overtime hours increased and I mentioned I stayed to make sure my team had the support they needed to get out as early as possible. Big Boss goes, Well, that makes sense. Keep doing that, but add any overtime to your Friday lunch so you don't rack up overtime. I explain that I can do this, but we'll still probably get a bit of overtime on Fridays since the end of the shift is obviously after lunch. Again, cool. Long lunches are nice. This works well for a few weeks. I am making sure I zero out my overtime, but I knew it was only a matter of time before they regretted doing any of this. We were approaching the busy season and getting more and more long chats and calls. I made sure to get Big Boss to email and CC me and my boss this instruction directly. Sure enough, a few weeks later, Monday, I'm there for a whopping hour and 30 minutes trying to get one guy out the door. Tuesday for an hour, Wednesday for an hour and 15, and to top it off, two whole hours on Thursday. It was a terrible week for last minute chats. I tally up my makeup time for my lunch. 5 hours and 45 minutes, plus an hour for my normal lunch. I normally worked 4 hours, 1 hour lunch, then another 4 hours. So that Friday, I came in and explained the situation to my boss. He was cool with me working for only 2 hours and 15 minutes the whole day, because I was doing exactly what the big boss said to do. So, an hour into my shift, I go on my 6 hour and 45 minute lunch. While I am enjoying my most of the day siesta, the entire line of business is burning down. Chat is so busy we have people waiting 30 minutes to speak with someone. On days like this, I normally jump in the queues as I do not need to document every case like our tier 1s have to and I'm very good at my job. I can usually knock out a 15 to 20 minute call for a tier 1 in 5 minutes or less. I can easily handle 4 to 5 chats at one time, seriously taking a load off that team. Now, I alone could not save this shift, no way. We were due for a hiring class and we're working on onboarding new tier 1s at the time. Of course, it looks bad to the client when one of your key players is absent all but 2 hours and 15 minutes of one of the busiest days ever for our LOB. I get back in, settle down at my desk, right as the rush is clearing up. The damage was already done and we were manageable for the rest of the day. Right at the end of my shift, I look and notice that there is no one on a chat and no queue. So I immediately log out and thank my team for working hard that day. Then Monday comes. I get to meet with the client, Big Boss and my boss for our weekly meeting. The client is furious about how on Friday one of our best assets was on a super long lunch break and Big Boss puts me on the spot and asks why that was. My response was rehearsed. According to company policy established and agreed upon date we met with the Big Boss, I am not to accrue overtime hours. Any hours over 8 hours worked within the work week must be made up during my lunch break on Fridays. 
Big Boss began denying it when my boss stepped in and was like, wait, I got an email about this. He pulls up the email Big Boss sent and shares it on screen in the meeting. Client is pissed and the corporate rep begins ripping Big Boss a new one on the phone. After ripping into Big Boss, the corporate rep speaks to me, telling me to accrue as many hours as needed to make sure my job is done and that if my company wants to retain this line of business, Big Boss is not to interfere with my generally very successful management without consulting them and myself. Since then, Big Boss has continued to try to interfere and change how I run my life. However, every time so far, the corporate rep has had my back. They are extremely happy with my work and I know I do a great job. Heck, they even pushed through a large raise for me when Big Boss was blocking my boss's attempts to get me more money. Ugh, what an idiot. My guess is that Big Boss was worried about his overtime KPIs for his team or whatever and he just tried to cut it, but it blew up in his face like it usually does. Thanks for sharing, OP. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.